Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. Leona Lissi, a multifaceted Italian actress who found herself hostage to the sultry looks that sparked her career and quit Hollywood in the 1960s after being typecast in bombshell roles. Like many other female Italian actors of the time, Verna Lissi was tempted to try her luck in Hollywood. However, after films in which her co-stars included Jack Lemmon, Tony Curtis and Frank Sinatra, she returned to Europe, where she had painstakingly built up a reputation, particularly in Italy and France. Was Vienna Lissi a replacement for Marilyn Monroe? Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. Vera Nalissi, who first captivated Italian moviegoers with her smouldering eyes, sulky smile and stunning beauty before sweeping into Hollywood in the 1960s to star opposite such leading men as Frank Sinatra and Tony Curtis. Lissy, like her contemporaries Gina Lolo Brigida, Ursula Andress and Sophia Loren, proved that she could do much more than look beautiful on the screen. When Lissy arrived in Hollywood in 1964, movie studios were searching for the next Marilyn Monroe, and she was one of several attractive European actresses who would capture the public's imagination. Her arrival in America was celebrated in a multi-page spread in Life magazine. A star of Italian cinema by age 20, Lissy drew international attention for her lissom appeal in a range of dramas and farces. She dyed her naturally brunette hair blonde, and the presence of a mole near her lips made her resemble a more exotic Marilyn Monroe. On the Italian screen, Lissy had been presented as chic and elegantly sensual, but she was rebranded for American audiences as a skin-bearing temptress. That quality was put to immediate use in her Hollywood debut, the 1965 comedy How to Murder Your Wife. The film starred Jack Lemmon as a cartoonist who impulsively weds Lissy after she emerges from a birthday cake in a bikini. His initial lust gives way to regret the morning after. The role, like her subsequent Hollywood films, played up her physical charms and minimised dialogue because of her limited command of English. When she landed the role in Murder, she spoke only three English phrases. Is necessary, is possible, poor Verna. But do not underestimate Lissy's linguistic prowess. Besides Italian, she was fluent in French and Spanish. During her career, which started as a teenager in 1953, Lissy played memorable roles in European and Hollywood films receiving various awards including a career Golden Globe in 2004 and two David Di Donatello career awards in 1996 and 2009. Lissy won the Best Actress Award in 1994 at the Cannes Film Festival for her performance as the Maleficent Queen Caterina de' Medici in La Reine Margot by French director Patrice Serrault. I've never seen that kind of woman before, like Jean Harlow and Madeleine Carroll put together, or Marilyn Monroe and Grace Kelly. The magazine quoted one normally blasé Hollywood photographer as saying. She was born via Alessi Pieralissi in Ancona on the Adriatic coast, where her father had a marble exporting business. When the family moved to Rome in the early 1950s, Vienna was doing well at school and there were plans for her to go to business college. In her native country, her cool and classy face is well known from 24 films and from years of smiling in toothpaste ads on TV, famously uttering the catchphrase, with such a mouth she can say whatever she wants, which would become a staple moment of Italian popular culture. However, in 1953, a friend of the family, the singer Giacomo Rondinella, persuaded the producer of the film he was making to give her a test, and she got the part. The film, and Naples Sings, would be soon forgotten, but it began a career for Lissy, who appeared in more than a dozen movies over the next two years. She had begun her film career as a teenager in the early 1950s, with a string of roles in Italian movies. Her first leading role was in The Doll That Took the Town, but it was her leading lady to Steve Reeves and Gordon Scott in Sergio Colbucci's sword and sandal epic Romolo e Remo that brought her international attention, 
the film becoming a hit as Duel of the Titans. In 1960, Lisa married football club magnate and architect Franco Pesci, prompting the actress to briefly consider retiring from acting in order to devote herself full-time to her responsibilities as a wife. She said she gave up Hollywood for the happiness of living beside my husband and my son. According to Lissy, this idea was very short-lived and she was back to business within a few months. Though Lissy would give birth to her and Pesci's son, Corrado, just two years later, her career did not lose traction. She was leading lady to Alain Delon in the popular swashbuckler The Black Tulip and Mario Monicelli's raucously funny Casanova 70, which received an Oscar nomination for its screenplay, was another international hit in which her leading man was Marcello Mastriani. These roles inevitably brought the offer of a Hollywood contract and her part in Richard Quinn's How to Murder Your Wife. Jack Lemmon later recounted that Lissy's volatile husband tried to attack him after visiting the set during a love scene. Lissy then starred with Tony Curtis in a mild comedy, Not With My Wife You Don't, and Frank Sinatra in Assault on a Queen, a tepid and fanciful movie about the Queen Mary liner being plundered by a submarine. Three years later, she starred in a wartime comedy shot in Rome, Stanley Kramer's The Secret of Santa Vittoria, and she skillfully made an impression, though both she and the film were overwhelmed by the tempestuous playing of the top-billed Anthony Quinn and Anna Magnani. She had rewarding roles in Pietro Germi's sly satire of provincial life, Signori e Signor, The Birds, the Bees and the Italians, and starred with William Holden and Borville in the French-language holiday weepy, The Christmas Tree, but roles were fewer and she began to appear frequently on television. However, Lissy soon became frustrated with the repetitive nature of these parts, which made much of her alluring good looks, but not of her acting abilities. She was unhappy, though, at her image and wanted to escape constant comparisons to Marilyn Monroe. She refused to pose naked for Playboy magazine, and she also turned down the role in director Roger Vadim's classic Barbarella, eventually filled by Jane Fonda, leading to a break from acting during the early 1970s. She was bold with a promising Hollywood career. Ultimately, her return to Europe and her family bond stood out. Lissy's love affair with Hollywood ended with a fear that she was being typecast as the dumb blonde, leading her to terminate her contract with Paramount Film Studios in the late 1960s. The termination of her contract with Paramount caused problems for Vienna Lissy. She was involved in litigation and had to pay a fine. In the late 1960s, after she broke her seven-year contract and was back to Europe, where she struggled to find roles. Her return to Italy did not take her away from the international cinema, since this country hosted then the filming of many co-productions. At this time, Lissy began a new and exciting chapter in her career, taking on roles that used her comely looks for satire or juxtaposition, like in Arabella and La Dolce Signor, these films found Lissy playing characters with sneaky or underhanded motives, relying upon Lissy's own personality and acting choices for full effect. She would continue to explore more and more dark and complex characters in the years to come, gaining particular acclaim for her turn as the cruel Catherine de' Medici in Queen Margot. She went on to prove herself a fine actress in the Italian and French cinema, winning seven David di Donatella awards. Lissy would continue to work at a near constant pace, finding particular success in the 2010s on television miniseries like Madre Awitami. Come middle age, however, a career renaissance occurred for Vienna. She began to be perceived as more than just a tasty dish and was given a wide variety of quality mature performances. More recently, Lissy's career mostly involved Italian TV series, with the notable exceptions of Christina Comencini's ensemble drama The Best Day of My Life. Lissy's last film performance after a 12-year hiatus is in Christina Comencini's upcoming comedy Latin Lover. Lissy's acting career was only halted by her death in 2014 due to lung cancer. 
Lissi is survived by a son, Carrado, and three grandchildren, Franco, Federico, and Ricardo. Italian media quoted her son as saying that Lissi, widely admired early in her career for her stunning good looks, striking green eyes and blonde hair, passed away peacefully in her sleep in Rome on December the 18th, a month after being diagnosed with an incurable illness. She died at the age of 78. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. Now it is your turn. What do you think about the life and legacy of Vienna Lissi?